Well, greetings one and all. Welcome back to the Backyard Tabletop. You, I bet you all forgot that we forgot that, or I bet you all thought that we forgot about the Backyard Tabletop, but we didn't forget about the Backyard Tabletop. We definitely remember that this was a thing. We were on vacation. Yeah, totally. I mean, the holidays. The holidays. I mean, Valentine's Day was huge. Valentine's Day. Oh, yeah, when this comes out, it'll probably be after Valentine's Day for sure. <laughs> I'm just, I have no idea when this is going to come out. But for us, Happy New Year from, from, uh, from Curtis and I. I am Jake. <laughs> I'm one of the hosts here. <laughs> yeah, and I'm Curtis, like you said. This is a podcast that Curtis and I like to just catch each other up on what's been happening in D&D in our lives. What's the haps? What's the haps in the D&D that we uh, really enjoy? This is our hobby. It's our escape, our passion, our... Let's face it, we were crazy before D&D, but I think it, it's it's needed. <laughs> uh huh. I think you got to be a little crazy to get into D and D, which most people are a little, you know, a little bit. I think in order to really embrace what D and D is all about, I think you have to be a little crazy. You gotta be a theater kid. <laughs> you were you were kind of a theater kid. We were kind of theater kids. We were home. I wasn't theater a theater kids. kid. I was an acting kid. Yeah, which is, oh. <laughs> which is different a little bit okay. because okay. theater is much. When you're a theater kid, you get all of the the like the community and like you're around a bunch of other weird people all the time. Yeah, too. that's true. Uh, that's true. I was just a child actor, so I just <laughs> have trauma. <laughs> I feel like that with, should be like a T-shirt. None of the, I just have trauma with none of the community. <laughs> <laughs> child actor and all i got was trauma unfortunately wow that is me i was kind of a i was kind of a theater kid being that i joined a drama group at a at a local church so mm -hmm. we did some skits oh, yeah. we did okay. some i guess some counts. interpretive dance back interpretive in the day yeah <laughs> I guess would be the, the 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 term that we would use. We we would also do a lot of those like theater kid icebreaker practices and and stuff yes. like that too. Yeah, so I we got I remember a, a few of, of those. <laughs> but we have left those days behind us, and now we uh, we just roll dice and play, tell mm -hmm. a story and pretend it's real for a little bit. Yep. Yeah, that's we that's just, mainly what we, we do. Play games. <laughs> that that's you know i feel like every group needs to have a little bit of a catchphrase i've been saying that like so i'm i'm doing a friday night game D and D game and that's what i to, in order like when we're all done chatting that's what i say to kind of get into the game uh do you guys want to roll some dice tell a story and pretend it's real for a little bit what do you think that's good that's good is it it's pretty like good catch, is it kind like of catchphrase it's like catchphrase uh, it's like uh Wow, I haven't watched Critical Role in a while. What does Matt say? <laughs> oh gosh! Um, now it's time for now. It's time to um, to finish this episode of Critical Role. Critical Role. Yeah, that's a, he. He says the title, the name of the show. Yeah, you should come up with a title. <laughs> I should come up with a title for our group. Yes, yes, Curtis. I've we've been playing a, a Friday night game. Um, mm -hmm. That's been a lot of fun. I've been introducing, getting getting the cobwebs out of my brain and yeah. back into my homebrew world that I have not stepped into. Oh man, probably a like couple years for me. Um, I mean, the stories are still bouncing around in my head. I like so. If for those of you that don't know, the the name of my YouTube and on social media is Valiant Valiant GM. Because that comes from my homebrew world and the na the, my my nation that's kind of my baby in in my homebrew world is named Valiant, so that's where that comes from. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? Was, uh, <laughs> yeah, I knew that. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, absolutely. Uh, how's uh, <laughs> how's uh, how's Gunnington doing? Hey, still, uh, you know, still a smoldering pile of ash. Yeah. Uh, well, so. I think 
Uh, so in the timeline, in the loose timeline that I have in, mm-hmm. in my head, this would have been a hundred years before oh. that game that I ran for you guys. Wow. That's um, cool. So yeah, it doesn't exist so, yet, probably. <laughs> so, I mean, in theory, it would... May, I, I think in my head it would be like a mining town right now. <laughs> yeah. Because like, I think if I remember like a small correctly... Little pit stop. Right. It, it, if I remember correctly... Uh, and you're a character that that Curtis wrote, and his backstory, the character's father started the town. Mm-hmm. But that character was also, like, he was in his 50s? It was, like, the oldest character I think you've, other than maybe an elf the, the, played. But... The, the character himself, um, Cormac, was, uh, yeah, he was in, like, his early 50s, um, and his father was pretty old when he discovered the town too like his son was he he Cormac was still a boy when his father like I don't I won't want to say discovered but like kind of founded, founded. and set roots yeah yeah uh in the town um and so yeah it, it wouldn't have been yeah. 100 years ago for sure yeah it might have been like yeah, so it probably would still be a good maybe 50 years from being discovered yeah. in my loose head brain uh, timeline. It might be right now like a little bit like a like a mining uh, area or something like that. Yeah, there might like be a some little, mining going on. Like a pit stop. Uh, but yeah, that uh, I that that's just in my head. I might change it. Who knows? <laughs> we'll see if they happen <laughs> to go there. How how it started was I, I, I had some ideas that I was kind of playing around with with uh some like ship adventure ideas um they were just like one sarah my wife absolutely adores sea adventures uh and like i think anytime she makes a character it's usually revolves around the key as of late not every character but yeah. it, it uh revolves around the sea so we've just been we were chatting and i was kind of jotting down ideas for for like a sea adventure so i was like well let's We'll start a game and we'll just kind of start on the sea. We'll kind of go from there. So that was like the first three, four, maybe five sessions um, do, doing that. And they just now reached the city of Linden, which is like on the southern mm-hmm. uh, far side. I, if, if I find the picture, I do have a picture. It's actually up on my wall <laughs> of the the uh, one that's hand drawn of the map. So it's kind of like way down on the bottom, so it's pretty far from Gunnington. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see if they make their way up well, there. Well, isn't that where we started in that that old campaign that we played? That was like the town where we no, all met up. No, so it? the one with uh, I remember, I remember with Linden. Cormac. I remember hearing that. Yeah, we were pretty. We you guys were actually outside. You were pretty far south, way into the the desert. Um, oh, okay. And you started actually on the outskirts of um valiant so you actually weren't in the nation yet and then part of that adventure was the travel up into um valiant so you guys went to clawfield which is very close to linden and then right further to the more more uh but the the lynn river was probably maybe you recognize that yeah something like that i do remember hearing linden uh, probably just from reading the map so much because we were constantly trying yeah, was, to figure out where we were going so cool <laughs> well and that was like right when steve one of our uh players uh did that map was for that campaign yeah, so, map. and it's yeah and it's i still have it <laughs> I, I love the map yeah um so yeah that that's been really fun and since it's kind of was a lot of um a kind of social encounters with like learning the crew and all that and then kind of the a couple battles at sea when we finally got to Linden, we had a, a session that was just kind of social introducing the town. And I was mm-hmm. kind of like, I haven't done a dungeon yet. So I want to do like a dungeon the bring in the maps and stuff. So I was looking through a bunch of maps I had from uh, Two Minute Tabletop. Yeah. Uh, love those guys. And like a while back, I, I bought like one of those packs that had like 200 maps or something so i found a a manor an estate that had two floors i was like okay i'm gonna i'm gonna use this as like the premise and i kind of want to do like a haunted house vibe but i don't want to do just the classic like 
there's ghosts everywhere, there's undead. I want to change mm-hmm. it a little bit. So that's when I, and then maybe this is Baldur's Gate 3 kind of going in, I went with more of an aberration haunted house. Mm-hmm. So my a, premise. Uh, a uh, sort of Cthulhu haunted. Not yes, ghost haunted. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So I kind of took a, some a liberties. Of the mind. <laughs> yeah, a hunting of the mind. I took some liberties. I came up with this little short story about um hopefully what Sarah can't hear this. Sarah, if you can hear this, plug your ears. Her her ears are plugged. <laughs> 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 oh, I will That's... I will tell you that. Um so <laughs> by by the premise was there was a warlock of a great old one and he uh for generations his family has been associated with this great old one. Mm-hmm. Well, he got to a point where he was done. He wanted to get like wanted to appease this great old one so he can get out of this pact that he didn't even start. It was from generations ago. Um, so what his idea was, he's going to go around and he was kind of a hunter since he was a kid growing up in this family and then into being coming an adventurer. He wanted to find these legendary creatures, sacrifice them to the great old one. And hopefully these legendary status creatures could appease this great old one and then let him out of this pact. Mm-hmm. And for a little bit, it did. So he actually, once he kind of hunted down these creatures and killed them um, with other various crew and, and with the kingdom, he wound up doing it and he stopped hearing from this creature that he had made a, his family made a pact with. So he actually settled down with a family, um, with, a, with a wife and, and had a couple kids when it started coming back. Uh, and then... Because it and it was very unhappy with him and he tried to fight it, but ultimately failed. And now this house has been abandoned for a decade and the family has changed. So mm-hmm. he I'm, I'm using actually, I believe it's from Lost Minds of or not Lost Minds, the Van Delver and Below, an mm-hmm. aberration cultist. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm using that stat block for the main character. And then an intellect devourer is the sun. So it was changed into an intellect devourer. There's a another um, aberration. It's like a mutant, aberration mutant or something Mm -hmm. like that, which is the mother. And then there is was a pet bird. And that is a grill (laughs) that's in this house. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. And then there is a uh, the and then the the. The young girl, the the daughter of this family, actually died in the attempt to try and escape the house. So she's actually a ghost here. Mm. Um, but that's a little bit of the story here. And I just kind of went through and and made that. So that was the, the okay, you that's can really unplug cool. your ears now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What do you think of that? Is that kind of a cool little... Story. I, I know it's not the actual lore of these creatures, but yeah. it's kind of fun to be a little. No, I I really uh, like that, and um, I think aberrations are a good thing to do that with because they're so weird and unknown and unknowable that it's like you don't have to stick to lore that much because really the yeah. lore doesn't even stick to itself that much with aberrations. <laughs> it's kind of all over the place. Kind of. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, that's a great idea. I, I love aberrations. They're my favorite uh, creature type. Are they your in, favorite? Uh, in D&D. Um, my, whole, my whole world premise is um, is kind of built around the aberration creature type as like the main issue that people deal with in the world. Yeah. You know, the main monster and creature. This um, alien like creature. Yeah, that this isn't... weird alien thing that there's seemingly no rhyme or reason to how or why it, it appears the way that it does or or, you know, the same the some kind of mistake that happens that creates a monster out of somebody could be replicated exactly one for one and the creature that would appear out of this awful issue would be 
wildly different because it's just so right. random and unknown um, mm -hmm. each time. Um, right. So because there's just some mind behind it all that's just uh, out there and, and totally mm -hmm. unfathomable. Um, so I, I really love that. I, I also love the concept of generational warlocks. Ooh, uh, I've I've done okay, that okay. a couple times in some characters that I've written. Um, yeah, I think it's I, an see, I think it's an awesome thing, especially for like Great Old One or like uh, Hex Blades, because it's like uh, Great Old One. It makes a lot of sense because whatever creature you're making a pact with, it has no it has no recognition of the <laughs> lifetimes of of yeah. mortal beings. That so was kind of my thought. Of course, it yeah. would just be like. Do, 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 do. Oh, I'll come back and affect <laughs> this again, and it's like, oh, it's six generations later. I don't. <laughs> that doesn't mean anything to me. You're, you are still connected through bloodline or whatever to whatever pact was made. Therefore, uh, you're still mine, kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, yeah. I love that idea. I love. I, 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 I've I've always loved a, a hexblade warlock that's like. Um, a whatever uh, emblem or or weapon or whatever it is that is their pact binding um, mm -hmm. is like a generational thing that is handed down from from like firstborn yeah. to firstborn to firstborn. I, I love that concept too. I've made a couple mm -hmm. of characters around that concept, and I, yeah, I find it really so. And fun. that was kind of my thing. How how the players got here was they were there's basically. Um, there was an NPC that was introduced that was going to show them around the town, and he also has an import t uh, store in mm -hmm. in the city of Linden, and so he was going to show them around. But his place got broken into because a few weeks ago he found <laughs> mm -hmm. these items, and my idea was actually making it some sort of like packed weapon yeah. or something like that that the players will. We'll find and see what they do with it. Um, yeah, because that was that was kind of like a great old one. Love the idea of like a like a a generational thing, like you said. I, mm -hmm. I I like that for for player characters from a sense of like, look, I didn't start this. My family did. I'm trying to either figure out how to use this for good or try and get out of it. I think that's a really cool yeah idea for like a a character to play with these flaws type of yeah. thing. You know, it's almost like what, uh, like trying to be like the vampire is like, I'm a vampire. So I only drink the blood of evil yeah, people or yeah, something yeah. like that. Right. So it's kind of like that idea, how to use these powers that are evil, but how can I use them for good? Um, yeah. love the idea. So that's, that's, I, I, I like this little story. I kind of ran with it and that's what my players have been doing and they've, they've almost got through it. So. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe and, maybe next time I'll let you know what happens. <laughs> and also, what, one of my other favorite things is like, I love warlocks. Warlocks are my favorite class. So forgive me if I gush about no all my, this, all my this warlock is what this ideas podcast for, is for a for. little bit. <laughs> um, uh, one of my favorite character concepts that I still have not gotten to play. Um, uh, but it was one of my like hey one first. day Curtis. It was like uh, this was back when I was still like trying to play online games because I didn't think any of my friends would be into D&D. &D. I made this <laughs> Little character. Little did you know. I made this character concept <laughs> and like applied because back then it was like you apply to games for them to see if you're a good fit for right, the group right. kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I applied to like three games with this character and then found out we had friends that liked it and like stopped trying to get into those <laughs> games. So I, we played it okay. in real life. But um, but his name was Kren, and it was like uh, uh, he was like a drow uh, or half drow. But the whole thing was like, love the there's this uh, 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 ring that um, gets passed down like through their their family lineage, um, uh -huh. and it, it's uh, it's not necessarily evil. Um, it's it's more of like a neutral power, um, and. Uh, he didn't know its origins, but its origins were with, in in my mind, the uh, Raven Queen, um, mm -hmm. because okay. he would have come from 
some sort of delineated, super, 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 super old long line of this like elven group that um, at one time, like way back, fractured from the uh, the Shadar Kai and became like drow. Okay. Because okay. the Shadar Kai oh, are wow. the ones so who like live back. in the yeah. Shadowfell and right, like, right. live with the uh, Raven Queen. And so like, uh, but his family still had this like, thing that they had to live up to but he never knew his family and one day he just wakes up in the middle of the night because whoever his siring uh person was died without having another child and he just okay. wakes up in the middle of the night with this searing pain around his finger because there's this <laughs> ring that uh oh transfers itself from line to line to line as it goes down and that's like the source of your weapons as you summon them. And he okay. like just wakes up with this like searing pain in his hand because the ring is like, shh, like burning into his finger. Uh, and he gets like visions and sees all this stuff and he's got to like figure out where this came from, who his parents were, why they did this. What does he have to live up to? And, Oh, that's uh, really it was, cool. It was a really fun idea. I really still want to play that character. Okay, well, one day, Curtis, maybe maybe we'll have you play it. Let's, no one steal his character. Nobody steal that. Nobody steal that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Steal it. No, <laughs> by <care>. all means. <laughs> Inspiration it won't be the exact same, right? It's like copyright law. It's like you have to change it 20% or something like yeah, that. Yeah, just change so the name. At least do good. that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I love that idea. That's really cool. Was, was, was it going to be a hex blade? Yeah, Hexblade, um, and then basically just like he he would do the summoning with his with his ring kind of a thing. But he, my idea was that it was like his family were meant to be like weapon masters, and so it wasn't like any one particular weapon that that he would use consistently. Like the ring could summon a which which the Hexblade uh, uh, does. Like you can actually summon various different styles of weapons anytime you want. It's not like it has to be the mm -hmm. same thing every time with a hex blade. Right, right. Um and so my my thought was that it was like he would change depending on the circumstance. Like sometimes it'd be a halberd, sometimes it'd be a short sword, sometimes it'd be a, a mm -hmm. you know, a mace, whatever the situation called yeah, for well, kind of a thing. And that's kind of cool because I D and D he, I remember when we first started really getting into it and playing it. I remember, like, because I've always wanted to do, like, the classic, like, fighter, like, or, yeah. or you know, something like that. That's, like, you get handed this this legendary sword from your family, and now you have to go and make, you know, do a good job with it or, or yeah. make a name for Gotta yourself up, or something. Or be part it. of a, yeah, or be part of a noble family. And D&D &D is not necessarily, unless the DM does a thing of, like, we're going to, as you level up, the sword levels up with mm -hmm. you. Like those, that's always Which an is, option. To be fair, one of my favorite things to do. I love. I, I agree. I agree. I, 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 I do. I do love that idea. Um, but I, I know for me, sometimes it's a little bit tricky to get into that. Like, um, it's like, I got this fan. I got this, uh, sword from my family. It's like, maybe the DM makes it a plus one or something like that. But then you find the sword of dragon slaying and you're yeah. going to go fight a dragon. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, yep. So it can be a little tricky sometimes. So I like that idea with a warlock that you have. It's more of like this ring that kind of seals the pact or, or whatever. Sure. And well, then and you can meditate on the weapon that you get that yeah. kind of becomes your pact weapon type of thing. Right. Yeah. And that, I, that I, was my kind of a fun way. That was it. my other thing my other thought was that like the reason this ring has so many like weapons to call forth is that like every generation prior was a master of one particular weapon. And then they oh, okay. would like, they would like seal those weapons into the ring so that future generations could call oh, and on so... those particular weapons. Oh, that's kind of cool. So it, okay. So sorry. It was like I missed way, that. So it was like, like way that. back when, way back when, way back when there were like six dudes that it went through like six generations and it was like the first one was like a halberd wheeler. The second one was like a long sword wielder. And so now uh -huh. every generation past those guys, like 
is super versatile and and it's their weapons that are like in the ring that you are summoning uh like the the weapons of your your ancestors basically coming to aid you so that's cool um, and then but almost like an avatar moment the reasoning (laughs) yeah the reasoning behind that is that now if you find a weapon that's particularly amazing that you want to pass down it becomes your packed weapon and that weapon becomes sealed in the ring and that's your Mm -hmm. you know addition to this long line of of these weapons that have been uh uh, added to this so i like that i like yeah do you do you feel like you ever if you ever did get the chance to do that then even later down the line you'd want to play that character like again but it's actually a generation like yeah, it's like that, it's like ten generations later or whatever. Or <laughs> that was one of my if favorite. It works thoughts in the timeline. That, like the 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 my thought was that the uh, the siring of the like ring happens through the elven bloodline, you know, that goes through, and so even if it gets muted a lot through the generations, it's like if he if that character had a kid with a human and then they had a kid with a human and then they had a kid with a human still mm-hmm. down the line they're going to be like part elf and this right, like right. this thing will still come to them like generations later even though the generations are getting shorter because they're more human each time you know that's kind of fun uh, I, l- I like yeah. that idea and even kind of a fun idea for like the dm to run with maybe the player doesn't mm-hmm. come back to play that generation but it's in the world now so the dm could have yeah. an npc that happens to show up that's in that line or something like that. That could be. Yeah. And, and with something like that, it's like, it's not, uh, it's not necessarily a bad pact, you know, like so many people focus on warlocks as making pacts with evil things, but yeah, in this yeah. case it's, it's the, the neutrality of the Raven queen and, and the point of the pact is something he has to figure out. Like, why do we have this? Were we mm-hmm. Royal guards were we protectors? Were we like what were what was our family that we had this amazing uh, gift given to us? Um, I just like I I I like playing around with the idea of warlocks. Like they don't have to be struggling with evil or yeah. uh, or uh, <laughs> power hungry. You know, they can be just in it because they don't know why, and it's not necessarily yeah. a bad thing. They just have to figure out mm-hmm. what they need to do with it. Exact and one of and, and I'm I'm not necessarily like you like I I like warlocks I have a hard time playing warlocks every time I've played a warlock I'm just kind of I, I don't know may, and maybe that's a weird thing to say for my favorite class as a fighter but <laughs> <laughs> so I, I hit the thing um, but I I do love the celestial pact warlock mm-hmm. I, I love that theme. And I know, uh, as far as subclasses know, go, I, I know it's not the best of the subclasses, um, but I, I actually just had an NPC that I made that the Silver Lark is her name, and she's a pack of the Celestial Warlock, and her whole thing is like, uh, she had a dream one night, and that her her town was going to be attacked, so she like sprung into action, helped the town as best she could, and then later, uh, the bird that came to her in her dream was a lark. And it actually showed up in real life and basically was like, holy cow, you jumped into action and all I did was just send you a dream. Do you want to team up? Like, I'll always warn you warn you of bad things and then you can always spring into action and we can like, you know, help each other out. And so that was kind of their whole <laughs> backstory. So they became like a folk hero. And that whole pact was like, we're going to go yeah. out and kill monsters. Like, we're just going to stop bad things the best that we are able with what we yeah. have been given. We're going to stop things from happening so yeah warlocks are fun because you really can play with that whole you don't have to be evil you don't even have to be power hungry i like i like that idea well and uh i think it's it's really fun to just play with the idea of um what do i do with this now like 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 this is a this is a thing that was handed down to me and i don't know why i don't know how i don't know why it matters Mm -hmm. uh what do i do with this like it's that it's that awesome idea of like like spider-man like (laughs) i've been given this responsibility i can't just ignore it you know with with great power comes great responsibility kind of a thing like right like i can't i can't just 
I can't just keep this ring on my finger and not use it, you know, kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. It, it's that immediate thing of like um, giving the reason why your player, your your person, your character is not uh, just the ordinary folk of the yeah. world. It immediately sets them apart, right? Sud- so suddenly burdened with greater purpose, yeah. And yeah, I I also just realized that that's sir that sure sounds a lot like Green Lantern, and I did not realize that <laughs> until just now. Because I'm not a Green Lantern <laughs> fan, and I've never read Green Lantern, uh, and I just realized that's that that sounds really a lot like a Green Lantern situation, that, but mm, it's different, okay? It's, it's different. different. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually really inspired by uh, uh, Final Fantasy 15 um, by the main character. There's so many that, named Noctis. Oh, I played that. I played the crap out of that game. Was that I the guy that like game. like? Um, he, I can't remember. Was he te- was he a teleporter? He's got yeah. He's got like weapons and or and super he can, fast. He can something? instantly transmit like to anywhere that he has one of his weapons, and so oh, that's he can cool. like yes. He can like throw a sword into a wall and then like appear on it and then drop down, which is something really cool that hexblades can actually do later <laughs> if you get the right packs and stuff. Uh, which was kind of my reason. Oh, for that, but... that's really cool. There, yeah. th- there are so many really cool concepts that I see in um, in media that I'm like, it's so cool to be like, oh, you could totally play that character in D&D. Like, so Sarah and I just watched um, the, the Kenshin uh, live action. Um, r- 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 oh, shoot. Roroni. R- r- <laughs> Roroni r- r- Kenshin is the name. Uh, it was originally an anime. Uh, or so, excuse me. Originally a manga, and then it was a '90s anime, and then they made live action versions. Have you have you heard of this? Never even heard. You, of it. you totally should. It, it's it's one of those things where you kind of have to hunt the live actions. Like some is on Amazon, and then some is on um, Netflix. It's like I think the final two parts are on Netflix. Um, the the third movie is so good. Um, highly recommend it. It's really fun. The first couple movies are a little bit. Uh, definitely meant for more of a, a Eastern audience, but then Netflix got a hold of it and kind of finished the the uh, the uh, arc, if you will. Uh-huh. Um, but what's so cool about that is I was okay. just watching this, and suddenly lately I've been obsessed with like monk characters. <laughs> oh, dude! Welcome to my life. It's just like, I, yeah, like, and it, it's just kind of it just reawakened this love for monks again because. My first character was a was a monk was a, is a wood elf monk because I just loved that idea. Um, fighters have always been kind of part of that, and I liked that kind of gish, um, adding a little bit of it's not actual magic, but it adds a little bit extra to your just attacks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I was just like, oh man, I want to play uh, a way of a kinsei uh, monk now. And I was like, re- I was reading that. I have a couple of video ideas I want to do on on monks and. Uh, I don't yeah. know. It, it just it just um, reawakened that whole love I, I have. It's so fun doing that. I actually have a new new character concept helped along by again uh, D four network. So yeah, they're great again. too. He's he's Col- awesome. Colby's so good. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, it's a it's a monk warlock subclass or like uh, okay. uh, monk warlock multi class, which is oh, something I've been wanting to do for, it was... for years and years. It's like <laughs> no. made for me. That is made um, for Curtis. He yeah, doesn't, he doesn't it, need artwork for this one. He just needs to put a picture of you there. And it's, yeah, it's, and, <laughs> well, and it it is a it is a Kensei monk, which is one that's very rarely used. They're the like weapon yeah. master monks, and they're kind of they're kind of eh. Like compared, like monks meh. are already monks are already kind of a little bit in five e, a little bit on the lower spectrum, yeah. just with how expensive they're. Um, their features, their 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 it's key like, points can go. It's, it's like an in between of like monk and fighter, but realistically, you'd actually get a better character if you just multi classed fighter with monk. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, that's really fun. I'll have. I don't think I've watched this one. I'll have to go go check I it out because I was like, just reading monks today. <laughs> it was just so great. I think the title is like the Shadow Blade Monk. Um. Okay. Because okay. he has it, he has it built around using Shadow Blade as his uh, main weapon of choice, which is oh, that's pretty, pretty cool. cool. 
Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. That's pretty cool. I like that idea. Well, and there there is one feature that's a little bit odd about it because it's like when you use the attack action, it's like the, mm. you get it at third level. When you use the the attack action, if you replace a normal weapon attack with an unarmed attack, you get a bonus to your AC. That one was always a little bit weird to me uh, because it specifically says your action, so it's not your bonus action. Um. I guess the idea is like, cause you use your, your action to use a, like a kick or something. So you're, you know, blocking with your weapon. But I thought that was kind of strange. It kind of almost not makes you, but it, it forces you to make an unarmed attack when the whole yeah, theme yeah. of the, the, the monk is to be around the, the yeah. weapons. Un- so it's just a little odd, but <laughs> until you get extra attack, that's kind of, it feels kind of like a waste. Yeah. Cause it does say, right. If you make an unarmed strike as part of the attack action on your turn, so it has to be, it can't be your flurry of blows or your bonus action attack because it has to be part right. of your attack action. Right. So that that weird makes more makes a little bit more sense when you get to fifth level, but up to that point, it's like you might as well just be, you know, just using your fists, I guess, but just it, you're holding. Your I weapon. think. But, I think the idea is that. You're striking with your body and deflecting with your weapon because it says you have to be right. holding your kensei weapon, and so it's almost mm-hmm. like a you're almost like keeping your guard up, but like doing like a low kick or like an elbow yeah. or something, and then keeping your guard up with your weapon, and mm-hmm. so it improves your AC. That's interesting. So yeah, it's it's kind of fun, I guess, thematic as you go to. I, I it also could yeah. help you explain your attacks as well. But yeah. anyway, yeah, anyway. I, I've just been reading uh, about monks lately, and the one that I now I really want to make a character out of is um, is the Way of Long Death. That one, that one just seems like a really fun, yeah, classic monk, and the Sword super, Coast Adventure Guide, <laughs> super cool. Yeah, I love, yeah. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Well, Curtis, how how is Cal doing? Like, how I I know oh, yeah. we we kind of podcast wise you know you know people are here hi everyone sorry hi. curtis and i <laughs> um oh right we're no, doing a podcast <laughs> yes, this is what we do <laughs> uh curtis and i go through our our game our weekly games that we run and and cal is is a character that curtis is playing mm-hmm. on on the weekly um so not necessarily getting into any story beats but now that you've um I believe before the podcast, you told me you've hit about chapter four. So you're getting, yes. you're over that halfway mark now. So mm-hmm. it's kind of, uh, you're getting pretty fairly close to the end. How, how's your character doing? Like, where, where are they? Are, as a, as a player in the game, how, how do you feel like Cal is as a character? Do you kind of expect him? Did you expect him to be where he is right now, mental state wise? I yeah. guess not really giving away too much. Uh, no, I, I, I won't or delve too like deep, that. and I'll 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 keep it to stuff most of the uh, party knows already because um, they all watch <laughs> this. But um, no, Cal's um, he's definitely not exactly like where I expected he would necessarily be at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, we're at level eleven or twelve, I think, at this point. Um, which means, cause, cause Cal is a, uh, um, two levels of fighter and then the rest is wizard. Um, such a to, fun to, to get those, class. to get those great, uh, that great AC and, uh, <laughs> the, the action wonderful surge. ability to spend action surge to cast two spells on a turn. Um, yep. he's a, uh, <laughs> he's, uh, very fond of explosions. Um, yeah, but uh, <laughs> Cal is is still kind of teetering the line between um, a lot of things. Honestly, he's kind of just riding the line in general. That's kind of his motto now at this point. Um, <laughs> he started as a recovering addict uh, mm-hmm. who 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 overdosed, and his sister saved his life uh, after going to the city. Um, he was trying to 
up his martial skills so that he could make something of himself, possibly be in the in the guard or something like that. Uh, but when his sister came back, she's a wizard, and so he started taking notes from her, and so he changed his uh, uh, changed his mind when he realized that would give him some sort of purpose, something to work towards, something to study. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, he found he was, was kind of a prodigy in it. A, a little bit, like he he's you know? still a little behind his sister because she has a a. a head start so to say yeah um, the, the fun but, i love how you did that with your multi-classing yeah, yeah and i that well that was kind of the point a little bit of like doing the multi-class where it was like the first two levels are fighter because then it was mm-hmm. like at that point i played it up that he was like starting to learn and he had his book and he was starting to like do his notes and write out his spells and things like that but that it just wasn't ready he wasn't practiced enough um, but his sister was like teaching him all the time. Um, and so, yes, we do have two wizards in the party and it's fantastic, <laughs> uh, because their niches are very oh, different. Cal is so, so focused on just getting rid of enemies Explosions. as quickly as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, big area of effect attacks, um, and things like that. And his sister is so much more focused on the, the more intellectual bits she's focused on, um, uh, buffing allies and and debuffing enemies and creating control in the environment and uh, yeah. those kinds of things so um she's she's much more about the utility that a wizard brings and and Cal is much more about the raw power that a wizard can bring <laughs> um so uh but um he's made a lot of progress he's he's casting some pretty high spells now mm-hmm. uh, i believe yeah. we're at um i think he is 10th level where you get your first 5th level spell? Gosh, I Pretty can't Pretty close. Remember. I think ninth level was 5th. I can go um, I can go look it up as you... Uh, in, in either case, uh, he's getting up to those higher higher level spells now, and he's really enjoying the, the power and the ability that it gives him. Um, I've got my character sheet right here. Hold on. Oh, nice. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see... Do, 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 do. A ninth level is when fifth level spells come online. Right. Yes. And then, yeah, and then eleventh level is when six spells come online. Yes. So we just got our uh, fifth level spell slot. Huh? Fifth level slots. Yeah. Um. So crazy stuff. Uh. Um. He's he's getting more powerful. He's enjoying it a lot. He's enjoying the power a little too much, maybe. But um, <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Classic. Uh, you know, he he he's a man who has a lot of trauma. He's a man who realizes that it's his own choices that have gotten him in the in the dump that he was in before, and uh, that now he uh, really, in his own mind, has no way to make up for the mistakes that he made. And now he's just a different person um, Mm -hmm. and has to try and live with that fact. And uh, in his own mind, honestly, he's, he's pretty much dead. Uh, He's, he, he should be dead. Okay. So he he still has that mentality in his head. He's, he still has that mentality that, that he should have died and he was given a second chance and that he's basically a dead man. And uh, his life that that gives him his life worth, I'll say, which which is to mean that it is worth much, much, much less than just about anyone else's. Um, Interesting. Okay. So he's he's the one who's always okay with just being like, we have to try. Like like the the odds may be absolutely terrible, um, but I'm gonna try because I might as well be dead already, and mm-hmm. and if it works out then I've just done another good thing and I've made more reparations yeah. uh, and I've actually done more with my life. Like he doesn't feel like he has to like give back to the community necessarily because he made mistakes, but he feels like he has to make his life worth something mm-hmm. because he was so worthless for so long. Um, mm-hmm. And so he feels like he's like making up for that by being a hero and and trying to get rid of these terrible things that are uh, uh, 
messing up the community and the people around him. So Yeah, which which is a cool way of like having a character almost at this fork in the road. Because I could totally see, yeah. not necessarily fork in the road, but like from a personality perspective, you could totally veer toward being a hero and just being self-sacrificial. Mm-hmm. But also that could be go the other direction of being maybe almost a little bit too, asi- too suicidal, right? For sure. For being sure, a little sure. bit too like... uh um throwing your not 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 throwing your life away uselessly but a little bit too of that yeah. side like it's it's that classic one of like living is so much harder right sometimes yeah, living through exactly. these this redemption arc is so much harder um you know so it's it's fun that that themes to play with of like i could see the other how the other players can help mm-hmm. steer yeah cal and stuff like that yeah, and, I was. And, I distinctly remember Curtis Cal. You were saying about Cal is that he was in your head uh, on the path of potentially by getting to twentieth level, uh, he would be a lich. Sure. Are you feeling like he's still on that path? Um, I, I think he has big plans if he lives, and that's kind of his okay. whole thing. Is like interesting. His, his thing is like. He has plans. It's not like he's living every day just going, I might die today, so why am I even looking to the future? No, he 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 has plans. He can't help it. He's he's smart. Mm-hmm. He he has things he wants to accomplish, but there's this part of him that's kind of dragging him down saying, "Yes, but you know, you could die at any time before that and that's okay." Um uh-huh. But uh, but he has plans. He has a lot of plans, and he would love to fulfill those. And uh, uh, being a human, he's pretty young. But uh, <laughs> yeah. But being a human, he knows that uh, uh, essentially, you know, I I think it would not be too far of a stretch for him to recognize that the best way for him to serve. And and do the things that he wants to do, which may not necessarily be good, but mm-hmm. but might be what he thinks is best. Um, uh, could lead him down a path of saying, "Well, I might as well be dead. Why don't I be dead?" And just be able to live <laughs> longer and accomplish the things that I want to do. Um, so uh, with with even greater power because because the other thing too that's is that a really he, interesting way of thinking of that <laughs> he, he loves the power that being a wizard gives him he loves the power of magic he loves that it puts him over people that are bad he, he doesn't want to lord uh-huh. over you know the average folk he doesn't want to be yeah. a a king he doesn't want to be a, yeah. a, a tyrant he much rather run things from sort of a shadowy perspective by just quietly enacting certain things that will change things for the better in his mind. Yeah. Um, Being a little bit of that background spy yeah. or vigilante or whatever. Yeah. What well, and, and, you know, one of the people that he's looked up to for a long time is, is literally a vigilante in the city who's basically Batman. Uh, yes yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> the, um, the zorro character yeah exactly um okay. and that's like one of the people that he's looked up to for a very long time which now they've met the person who is that person and they've figured out that it is him and so he's asked that guy and and is going to continue to ask that guy a lot of questions um but but his whole thing was like once they killed the guy that was like doing all of them wrong this like crime boss um uh-huh. yeah. he he started and it, and it kind of got shut short because there was like a you know there was like a plague in the city that caused everything to just shut down right but i had started with dip i had started making like little tidbits here and there of of these plans that he was setting in place to basically fill that power gap with somebody who would use the underworld for good reasons being himself at least what he thought are good reasons okay right i keep right, saying right. good reasons but it's not necessarily <laughs> yeah. good aligned reasons it right. is it, in his the mind ends what, justify the, best the for everybody type of thing. yes yeah yeah uh, and he had started like uh paying some of the young children that they freed from this guy 
to like be his eyes and ears in the underworld, like in the undercity. Mm -hmm. And he had started like uh, thinking of what he was going to do about like the drug trade and like things like that. And all this stuff he was, he was thinking about going and meeting with the, uh, the Arconas, which were like a, uh, a, a, a noble family that lives in this undercity. And everybody says they have ties to every little thing that goes on there. So he had started making all those plans and then it all kind of got by the the uh the crazy stuff that's been going down since then. But that does not cool. mean won't pick up from where he left off once the <laughs> campaign ends. Uh and oh, if snap. if if the campaign ends with them, you know, possibly deposing a uh royal figure, um he might do his best to place himself in a position where he can influence whoever sits in that throne next. That makes sense. That makes sense. And by the end of this campaign, being roughly a level seventeen character, yeah. I mean you could you you could definitely do a lot in a really good position. So, or at least definitely have some sway of yeah. putting yourself in a good position. Interesting. Yeah, and I, well, I'm I, excited I, to to hear more about where uh, where Cal's been. What Cal's been up to. It's interesting writing that line between I'm worthless and if and if me dying can do a, can bring a good thing that's so worth it because because then my life becomes worth something and it is not worth anything now. Mm. So if I die doing something good then that brings worth to a a worthless life. It will be remembered as having worth. Um, interesting. But he's also writing the line of, but I also have a lot of things I'd want to accomplish, you know? <laughs> and so I think there's things in his mind starting to turn about like, could there be a way I could continue affecting things after some kind of sacrifice like that? And and those mm-hmm. thoughts might lead him towards, well, I'd die and then come back as a lich and affect things that way or uh, <laughs> or I'll set up a you know, a, a shadow organization that will continue doing my work after I'm gone kind of a thing. Uh, Interesting. So he's Interesting got, he's concept. got big plans. Or go and find that vampire and see if he'll turn yeah. you into a... Uh... Dude, he <laughs> thought about it. I'm I'm serious. He was like... Yeah. No, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> probably not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> that, would, that would be hard to explain. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so cool, man. Well, I'm excited to... To get back with that. Uh, mm-hmm. Thank you all so much for uh, being here as Curtis and I just kind of catch up with each yeah. other. This is very much a, a catch up episode um, and just kind of we're, we're excited for the new year. We're going to continue recording these podcasts, talking about our games, talking mm-hmm. about uh, our character, uh, what, what characters are up to. I'll, I'll be talking a little bit about the the game I'm running um, when when we are able and then Curtis will be continuing with his uh, Friday night game. But also, yeah. since you are doing Fendelver and Below uh, every like like twice a month, mm-hmm. I believe you said two three times a month. Yeah, um, we are going to be getting back to to uh, mm-hmm. reviewing that that going chapter by chapter. Uh, we were yeah. in chapter five, I believe. So yeah, my uh, That'll be really excited, which is where things start getting new. Uh, stuff that's never been written before. Uh, my character, my my players just um, just finished uh, chapter two, so uh, they're oh, making nice. a, okay. they're making a little bit quicker progress. Right, they just hit level so they, three. Um, so, so if I remember correctly, that's they they've just hit dealt level with three, the red and so they okay, mm-hmm. perfect. They've, they've dealt with glass. Cool. And, so and they just now they the have side out, quest so. chapter. Yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, raising that XP bar. Yeah. yeah, baby. Yeah, it'll be fun. So mm-hmm. uh, this is where things speed up a little bit. You know, it's much less about, ooh, a new town. Who's this? Who's that? What's this? What's that? <laughs> and more about, okay, now we know what's going on. Let's get to business kind of a thing. So um, I'm excited for that. It'll be fun. We'll do Very a little cool. bit of catch up well, on, I'm, I'm ex- on, on that too. Uh, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about how the dungeon went and, and stuff like that. I've got some fun stories about, about how yeah. the, uh, the red brand... I'm- uh uh hideout went it was fun yeah podcast of stories because curtis and i love stories <laughs> mm-hmm. 
And we like to just talk talk general D and D stuff every once in a while. Yeah, you know? general. That this was just a great episode just to catch up a little bit. You mm-hmm. know, just just chat. Just get the just chat. How you doing? Just get the see juices you. flowing. Yeah, get the juice flowing. Curtis, I would be amiss if we didn't get if if I didn't mention in this podcast getting back into it. Uh, where I was at on my honor run in Baldur's Gate three. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell me about it, man. Yeah, you no, started. A, I, they, you started an honor difficulty have, run of Baldur's Gate yes. three, which means which means that you have one life basically, right? If your whole yeah, party dies, right, it's done. So and you, lose. you you have honor mode is is tactician um, difficulty. So it's with the some hard extra mode stuff too, right? With uh, legendary actions on some bosses. Well, but so there's even it's other very, things. Very, very interesting. I think there's even other stuff like That's, haste potions don't give you two actions; they only give you an extra. Yeah, attack. Yeah, they, they they give only give you extra attack. Yeah, the, the there's like a, that there's got like a, a few nerfed. other things. That, Off the top uh, of my head, in, I can't really in, th- uh, honor mode. think. But yeah, I know there's certain there's certain things that aren't quite as good. And then yes, like you said, there's only one save file, mm-hmm. um, which actually I I kind of like. I kind of like just the one save file. Uh, it's easier to keep track of. Um, and yes, if you uh, total party kill, uh, it does end the honor run. I believe what happens is you can it moves to a custom mode, so you can still stay right. on this difficulty with it, with it, go all the way through. You just do not get rewarded with the golden dice at yeah. the end if you complete the game. Yeah. Um, so th- th- let me preface this by saying I'm actually not that gamer that likes to play games in hard mode. No. I I like I oftentimes will actually play on easy mode because I'm usually just here for the story. And so the last thing I want as a player is use my valuable time that I have to play this game um, to spend the next three hours on this one fight because I'm playing in, in Getting hard super mode. super frustrated. I, yeah. Yeah. It's like, I, I just, I'm here to, can we move on? You know, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, that that's usually me. Um, but actually, this has been a lot of fun. Um, having, I've technically only beaten the game once. There, I am really close on another one. I'm like, I have like two bosses left on another run. So I have essentially... Very closely beaten the game twice. So really going back into it, it's changed like every fight now. I'm kind of like, oh, cool. Okay, I got to set up, Mm -hmm. um, set people up. Elixirs have become way more useful now because I'm actually like thinking of like using the the coatings for the weapons and the elixirs and saving your your speed. Resistant potions was huge. So, So, so far I am almost through act one. I only have the the grim uh forge boss the the animated armor guy grim. his name's grim. at the at yeah. the grim forge grim uh so that's the last boss i need to defeat before moving on to act two i i i killed the hag uh the gith the gith crash has been the hardest part of act one Oh, dude. Um, the, I think the gith crash is the hardest part of act one if yeah you, if you and, don't and, play it uh you know if you don't keep them on your good side, that crush is such a hard place to fight through. Right, very much so. so and I, I was able to get to to the boss, and that's where the fight happened. So I actually had to fight my way out, out of it. Yeah. So that was that was hard. Uh, the hag was. I was really nervous about the hag, but the hag actually wasn't too bad. Uh, her yeah. legendary action is every time you you know how she duplicates herself. Mm-hmm. So she. She does that, and then every time you cast a um, a spell, uh, she'll she can do it again. So you can get like a a crap ton oh, of dang of those things if you don't manage how often you're casting spells. Yeah. Um. So, but but I was I think I was a level six. So health wise, I was able to keep up just sure. fine. Uh. But yeah, the that the la- uh, I believe Inquisitor. War, war crest or something like that is his yeah name? whatever yeah yeah and he does his mind link thing so he mind links with a bunch of people and it, it gives him more psychic damage and then the legendary thing is i think every time he takes damage he can br- br- give you psychic damage and then he can summon a like it's kind of like a spiritual weapon but it's a psychic one it does psychic damage mm. i almost died um 
what happened was basically he got to the point where he had like six of these psychic weapons up. Uh, and Jeez. his mind link every, every time he would he would do this mind link where he would he would do psychic damage to you it got up to like 46 damage of psychic oh gosh and I was like and so shadow heart was still full health but then he targeted her he did like 46 damage and then did two attacks and she went out so she went out in one turn and then my character and Astarian go down so then it goes to Carlax turn she's the last one so I pop in a p- visibility potion to get out uh, to go res everybody up. And then I go back into the fight <laughs> so I could get through that. That has been the closest I have come to Jeez. TPKing. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to talk a little bit about that because <laughs> this has actually been a lot of fun. And I'm not a guy that likes hard mode. And it's been yeah. a lot of fun. I guess it's like D&D hard mode. So I, 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 say, like, yeah. I like what that's bringing. It, it, I'm sure it feels a little more like like those tough fights you get in D&D where everybody's scrambling yeah. and you're constantly picking people up and like yeah. you're you're you spend an hour before each fight trying to prep and figure out what, yeah, what you need f- to do and stuff out. traps to set mm-hmm. and all those things and, and what's uh <laughs> and then what's when your... legendary actions come mm-hmm. up you're like oh frick <laughs> oh shoot it's legendary oh no yeah, yeah. <laughs> um what uh what what did your build end up being on your main character? So right now I'm level six light cleric. So oh, I, just I'm running up. actually yeah. Right now I, I may do some other stuff. Right now I have myself as a light cleric and Shadow Heart's a life cleric. Mm-hmm. So uh that's been really nice. Uh and then I have a Starian who's a rogue, and then Karlak is a battle master. Nice. Um so that's that's my my uh party comp if you will yeah and it's been a lot of fun that's great it's been a lot of fun um carlac has a great weapons master and oh my gosh is that <laughs> really <Dude>. good <laughs> yeah in my in my campaign i'm not playing on anything i have it on custom mode with a few things turned up for uh mm-hmm. uh uh like enemies have a little more health and they're a little smarter and yeah. stuff um but uh yeah, I have uh uh Lazel has uh is like a barbarian fighter multi-class with uh nice. a great weapon master and uh all sorts of like other things and like an awesome weapon that she's using and dude she'll do like like 32 damage on a on a single hit. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's it's crazy. so good. It's and so then, good. Uh I actually changed Astarian to a swords bard mixed with rogue. Uh, I really, and it, I really like. I feel like Astarian is a bard. Him, I'm not going to lie. It fits him pretty well. Uh, yeah, with the little with the little bit of rogue in there and the and the swords yeah, bard. Well, it's you got to love a vampire that fun. plays a violin. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's yeah. that's just my opinion. <laughs> um, and and he's like he's our big damage dealer dude because i have him with the whatever the archery version of great weapon master I oh nice oh sharp, sharp shooter, shooter or something where yeah. you take like 10 minus 10 to hit but it get uh gives you extra da- or minus five to hit and it gives you 10 extra damage yeah um and he's got dual uh <laughs> hand crossbows oh yeah that's a fun with, build i love with that build. two bonus actions because of thief and dude mm-hmm. Because of Swords Bard, he's got that one thing where he can make two ranged attacks with one attack action. Oh, it's that's so good! Crazy. <laughs> he, I might, he I almost, might respect like, Astarian. I think he almost one shot that same guy that you're talking about. Like one round, ah, killed him. Nice. Because it, okay. it was like, anytime I want him to, he's doing like two hits with with his first attack, two hits with his second attack. And then two bonus action attacks. So that's two, yep. four, six. That's six hits that are all doing plus 10 damage if they hit, plus whatever he rolls for damage. Like, I'm it's gonna, insane. Wow. It's like near I'm 100 might, damage each round. Story. <laughs> it's crazy, man. Uh, I might respect Starry. Do you do you feel like you're going to do a, a honor run? Or is that just not your thing? No, I'm. I absolutely hate... 
uh, the idea of like, uh, like roguelikes, that idea that like, if you die, you fully start over. Like you don't keep anything that you've made progress on or anything like that. Oh yeah. And so like honor mode runs like that and stuff like that, where it's like you get one shot and if you screw something up, everything's gone and you have to totally, uh, uh, give up and restart. Like, I hate that. It kills me. Okay. I, I I understand that. I understand that. For me, I'm already kind of obsessed with making characters. I've probably made like six mm-hmm. characters um, that I just wind up deleting and then just going back and like I'll, I'll get to a certain point and then delete it and go back and I've done that a couple times. So I don't mind it as much in this game because I'm kind of like I I like making characters. So. Yeah. Sure. I think if if I fail if I fail this cleric, I might I might do a bard and, and do yeah. that build that you were well, just talking about. Well, and I think the reason that it that it uh, bothers me so much is because it's like I've put so much effort into this. Like by the time you finish Act One, that's so much time <laughs> and effort that you've spent. Like if that's you true. die in Act that's Two, true. or God forbid, die in Act Three, that's. <laughs> 80 hours of time uh, that just poofs. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, oh, that would be so frustrating yep. to me. I would not I would not be able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um shout out I I watch a guy his, his name is Wolfheart. Wolfheart FPS, but he's a he mostly does RPGs and stuff. Um but he got to the final boss, the uh spoilers. I'll just Spoilers. say final boss. I'll just say fi- he he got to the final boss, and I'm sure you know what the final boss is. Mm-hmm. Um, it had 19 HP left, and he he was about to do a final attack on it. It was like a level four um, uh, inflict wounds or something. But for some reason, I don't know if this is part of the game. He had a speed potion on, and he walked into a haste grenade spore area. And for whatever reason, it canceled it out and made him, um, I don't know what they call that, lethargic Le- or something. Lethargic, so they, yeah. Uh, so it ended his turn, and then uh, that was actually the Whoa. end of how many rounds it takes till the, and, oh, that was a spoiler. <laughs> I might bleep it out. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, <laughs> um Anyway, he got to that point and he he wound up dying, so he didn't complete it. Uh, he wow. technically completed the game. He had 19 HP left. I'll have to. Sh- I'll send you that video, dude. It was. It's actually that's, pretty. That's funny. crazy. I wonder if it's because like it ended the haste effect that was already on him in order to take on the haste effect of the grenade. But yeah. when a haste effect oh. ends, no matter how it ends, it makes you lethargic. So yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll send you the video. He wow. did a he did a that funny like recap of his honor mode, and it was really funny. And I'm sure for him, it, he got great content, so he was totally okay. But yeah. <laughs> it was just like, <laughs> oh Jeez, well, well. Thank you all so much for uh, listening to us uh, catch up, if you will. Um, catch up. This is the backyard tabletop, and I'm 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 Jake. I'm, I'm not Curtis. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm this, uh, this, this is uh, this is a this is a backyard tabletop, and uh, I'm Curtis also. <laughs> we will be back uh, in a couple weeks. Uh, for yeah. those of you that are new, I do my very best to post every other Monday uh, here on the YouTube's, and then we are also on Spotify. And um, Spotify. I, I have to go check. I, I I know for sure we're on Spotify. I'll have to check if the apple tunes thing went through but anyway apple tunes uh <laughs> apple, tunes. apple tunes uh we will see you next time on the backyard team <laughs> bye bye uh, happy new year everybody <laughs> sure, sure.